They've become the heroes of February 22nd. 27 people receiving bravery awards for their actions on that devastating day. These three policemen were the first at the collapsed CTV site, where 115 were killed. But without their efforts, that number could have been much higher. And it was by chance these three were the first at the collapsed building. Before 12.51, they were at a condemned house on Gloucester Street, searching for stolen property. We needed to get into that house, didn't we? And I remember smashing a window and thinking I was in big trouble for damaging property. <laughs> Little did I know that half an hour later half the city had fallen down. But Constable Shane Coles was out on a different job, but at the moment the quake hit, his natural instincts as a cop kicked in. Basically we just we put the lights and sirens on, got all the way to Cashel Street and uh, Cashel Madras and my first thought was when did they pull the CTB building down? And then realisation sort of kicked in and Steve and I jumped out and, and went and found these guys. So a matter of minutes after the earthquake, we were there. Once on site, it was Sergeant Mike Brooklands who took charge, becoming the police controller on site until 3 a.m. the following morning. I think it's the people that are around you that actually, it's not brave, but allow you to do some of the things that you did. You couldn't do them by yourself, I don't think. He was the first to make contact with the police communications team, giving them a situation report and requesting for the fire service and other assistance. He spent hours deploying staff, establishing a grid pattern for the building search and assigning staff to specific areas. But helping in a crisis was part of why he joined the police force. It was one of our oaths that we swore and it's the sort of people that the police are. And there's much probably nothing more better thing you can do in this job than do something like that. And um, I suppose you think about your own family and your own children and things like that. And, would hope that someone would do the same for you one day. With no amount of training ever preparing him for the task at hand. I don't think any training would cover us for that. I think it was just a human instinct on what we did um, as police. Along with firefighters and civilians, the trio led several rescues amongst the rubble of the building. A fire had broken out on the lower levels complicating rescue efforts. And within the first hour, the building's lift tower was disintegrating with each aftershock, putting their lives at risk with each shake. Throughout that day, and it was a long day, and at certain times I just stopped and looked around, and no, at no stages I think, oh, this is brave. <laughs> I kind of thought, what just happened? This is just too much. Initially, they freed a woman and two children, then searched for audible tapping or voices, managing to pinpoint the locations of eight survivors. They heard a woman calling for help in the burning area of the building. Making several attempts to reach her, they wrapped wet clothing around their heads to protect against heat and smoke. Climbing down inside the building, they managed to reach the woman and pull her free before it became engulfed by flames and smoke. I'd honestly say I've never been so petrified in all my life. A coroner's report criticised nearly every aspect of the fire service's response that day, but the police force don't believe they would have acted any different. I think unless you're there, unless you're on that building, don't criticise. Because you don't know, you don't have the emotive side of things, or the, or the risk factors that are involved or anything else that's going on. But at the end of the day, the three believe they were acting the only way they knew how. Didn't really think too much about what I was doing. It was just a case of that's that's the job. And you know, it wasn't even that's the job, it was more of just being a human and just doing what I thought was best. From their rescue efforts, six lives were saved from the collapsed CTV building, but that day hasn't changed their lives. I suppose every experience you go through changes you a little bit, but as far as, you know, how I look at things now, I'm the same person. When I look back on it, I wouldn't change a thing. I'd, I'd go back on that, uh, onto the CTV site again and do what we've done. It's thanks to people like these three that so many lives were saved on one of Christchurch's darkest days. Emma Cropper, CTV News.